So there is this fairly new campaign type with Google Ads that is going to replace smart shopping this year. And of course, I'm talking about Performance Max. Now, lately, a lot of people have asked me about it. Like, should I use it? Does it make sense for me as a small e-commerce store? Should I do some Performance Max or smart shopping? Like, what's really the thing here? And in this video, I want to give you an overview on what Performance Max really is who it's for, when you should consider using it, so that in one of the next videos, I'm actually talking more about the technical things of how to actually set it up and specifically about different asset types, images, etc. So make sure to subscribe if you wanna see that as well. And with this being said, let's get started and talk about Performance Max. First of all, very clearly, my recommendation is to get familiar with them now because soon they are going to replace smart shopping, as I said before. And when that time comes, it makes sense to have a Performance Max campaign running, to have tested it and not to be forced to use Performance Max when you've never done that before. I have no idea how exactly this transition period will look like, whether they will just take over or whether they will notify you several times and whether it will be a totally different thing. But it makes sense to really do that right now and give it a try. First of all, Let's talk about like the Performance Max 101. What are Performance Max campaigns in the first place? Well, they are like the biggest campaign type available on Google Ads right now in terms of the volume that you will most likely get and the inventory that these campaigns are actually showing on. So we have search ads that show on the search engine results page, search engine results page, right? We have shopping ads that do the same thing, but with images and things like that. Then we have display ads that show on the display network when you are browsing around. And Performance Max literally does all of that, including YouTube, including images, including shopping catalogs and text ads and so on and so forth. So they are literally sort of the top level thing that includes any other campaign type. And it's basically the ongoing trend that Google is really presenting us with, which is basically this whole thing of automation and smart campaigns and smart bidding and all these kind of things. And Performance Max is, so to speak, the pinnacle of that, right? You can get access to a ton of inventories for, with a single campaign. You don't need to have, to have 10 different campaigns with different settings and all these things. You just have one big campaign that will optimize itself over time if the budget and the assets and everything that you put in are plenty. And then, in theory at least, it will perform very, very well. So it's the campaign type with the biggest scalability in the long run. Now the question, of course, is should you use Performance Max in the first place? And I want to say one very important thing here. Performance Max campaigns will likely not perform for you, so they're not so maxed in that case, when other campaigns haven't worked for you at all. Okay, so when you have a shopping campaign, but it never really worked, your ROAS was always terrible and nothing really happened and you were just flushing money down the toilet, basically, chances are that Performance Max will not suddenly start to improve everything, right? Or if you have a smart shopping campaign, didn't really work, switching to Performance Max will likely not improve this. Why? Because Performance Max to some degree is like a generalization. You take a lot of different campaign types, you put it in one, it's easy to use. It can be very, very powerful and scalable, but it will not necessarily make your performance in terms of ROAS better because all these individual campaign types remain the ones that you can optimize to the, the farthest extent, right? You can take a shopping campaign, optimize everything around it, bidding, uh, maybe on the, on the product level if you use manual CPC, negative keywords, and so on and so forth. With Performance Max, it's all under this one big umbrella. So it has other advantages, but that's not necessarily one of them. So stay away, at least for now, if you just haven't managed to get any other campaign working yet. You should see Performance Max mainly as a scaling option. The second thing is that you really need to commit to Performance Max. So what I see a lot is that people give it a try for like two, three days, spending 30 bucks a day. So they've spent like 60 to $100. And then they judge it and they're like, okay, it doesn't work, I pause it. I get it, you don't wanna lose your money, obviously, which makes perfect sense. But the problem here is that you need to give it time. You need to let it optimize itself. Think about it, you have so many different assets that you give, ideally, give Performance Max. You have images, videos, text, catalogs, um, all kinds of things. And all of them have to be distributed across all these different networks and they have to be compared and they have to be combined and Google has to draw conclusions from that. So likely you need to spend hundreds of dollars minimum to see like a very, very useful test with that. 
So this means if you are a very small e-commerce business, you just started with Google, they are probably not your best bet because you don't want to sort of just commit $500 or $1,000 to something that you have no idea yet how this will work. But if you are a slightly more established business, let's say you spend $5,000 a month on Google, $7,000, $10,000, maybe even like three, four thousand $4,000 only, then yes, you should give them a try if your current campaigns are doing okay, but you want, want more volume. Again, the situation to use them in is when you want volume and not pure ROAS because everything else is not profitable at all, right? Then they can perform very well, but you need to be aware of the fact that you need to commit to them, that you need to set aside the budget and let it run. Then what's also important is you need to feed it very, very good assets. So the worst thing you can do with Performance Max besides like pausing it right away is to just like throwing together some half done ads and, and headlines and just trying something and be like, okay, they will figure it out for me. Well, they won't, right? Like the whole strength of Performance Max and Google in general, in fact, is that you feed the system very good assets and data and then they crunch the numbers for you, they find the right people and they optimize and scale and everything. But if you give them like crappy headlines and if you have some very low quality images, whether that's because of low resolution or because they look super boring or whatever it might be, then you're feeding the system bad assets, they will distribute them, they will nonetheless spend your money and take it happily. I mean, in the end, it's still Google, right? But they will not give you the results, very, very likely at least. So you need to basically sit down up front and be like, okay, what do I need? You need high quality images, ideally one, two, three high quality videos as well. You need to put together good headlines, good descriptions. So ideally you are aiming for that ad strength of being excellent, right? So Google gives you this little um, indicator of how strong your ad is, something from um, poor, I think, to excellent. And you don't need to have an excellent one, but it kind of makes sense to at least look at that a little bit because it gives you a nice indicator of whether you give enough assets, whether they are diverse enough. So if you've done your best and it says good only or even average, don't worry, right? It's not your primary goal to satisfy Google in making your ad excellent, but it's a nice way of looking at it and be like, okay, it's poor, probably I need to add some more stuff. It's average, just thinking about it, like, can I do better? and then taking it from there. But you need great assets. That's the only way that a performance max campaign can really work, or at least 90 plus percent of the time, right? So don't put together some like half done campaigns that you just wanna give it, a, because you just wanna give it a quick shot and uh, that's it. That's definitely not the way you make performance max work. So let's talk about priority of uh, performance max campaign. Most likely what you will see is that as soon as you set a performance max campaign live, other campaigns that are targeting similar things, you know, shopping campaigns targeting similar products, search campaigns targeting similar keywords and audiences, they will immediately lose volume. At least that's what happened to me in pretty much all client cases where I've applied them so far and I've spent around, I would say, a couple of ten thousands on them so far. So nothing super huge, but enough to like see a pattern. And that's most likely what happens, okay? Because they take highest priority. So far, when we talk about shopping, the shopping structure at least, we had standard shopping. Then we had smart shopping, which overrides priority of sh standard shopping and of dynamic remarketing. And now we have performance max, which basically overrides priority of everything, right? And because it includes so many different placements and, and campaign types, it can literally override the priority of pretty much everything else. So as long as the smart, uh, as long as the performance max campaign targets things that other campaigns target too, then it will steal traffic away from them. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it means that if you currently have like a super profitable shopping campaign or a very, very good search campaign, be careful with your performance max campaign and try to isolate it a little bit. So for example, I have a client that has just a very small amount of products in his store, like 10 to 15 roughly in that range. And there is like slightly high ticket from 150 to like $300. I've tested Performance Max specifically for one product in this account. And so far it's doing much better than before, right? I've tested this product in search and shopping, even in smart shopping. And now with Performance Max, it's actually performing the best so far. 
but I'm definitely not risking some of our best sellers to be eaten away from Performance Max and maybe perform worse. So if you have a smart shopping or a standard shopping campaign, for example, and you're selling products in, in it that are, and it's going very well, you have a six X ROAS eight or whatever means great to you, then don't or try to avoid using Performance Max for these exact products. I would always go with the ones first that get some traction, right? Or maybe they are profitable but on a very small scale. So you should either use it with products that are profitable but very low volume, so not that much to lose but a lot to win, or products that are just doing like okay, right? And you wanna just try something different. If they have not worked at all so far in any way, what I just said applies. You should probably try to make it work in some like dedicated campaign type first, but if you see some sort of traction and it can, it could be like improved, you could put, or you could, yes, put gasoline on the fire, then it makes sense to give Performance Max a try. So keep it isolated, keep it focused on something specific and only do like your entire inventory, for example, if you say, hey, I don't care, my campaigns are all not doing that great. I just wanna simplify everything in one big fat Performance Max campaign. Let's give it a try, let's see what happens, done. Can work, usually not the best approach, but if you are short on time and you wanna do it yourself that way, it could still be an option. In all the other cases, try isolated products, try isolated topics, a specific category, a specific collection, whatever it might be, you have plenty of options in Performance Max. So yeah, this was pretty much my first quick overview on Performance Max. As I said, it is important to give it a try when you can and when you have the budget soon. Also, I have a Google Ads checklist that is free with 45 steps at the moment of that recording. It might be more over the next days and weeks. And in there, I'm also adding a few more lines and points on Performance Max. So if you are using Google Ads for your e-commerce business or someone else's or your clients or whatever, then you should go to the link in the description to get this free checklist. It's 100% actionable. You will be able to tick things off and you know where you are and what you need to improve on. And I promise that with that checklist, you have a much clearer path to what you need to do. And you probably have a lot less open questions and question marks above your head. So with this being said, thanks a lot for watching. I hope this video was helpful. As I said, in one of the next ones, I'm talking more about the specifics on how to put a Performance Max campaign together. So make sure to subscribe and activate the bell if you don't want to miss that out. And I look forward to see you in the next video. So take care and bye-bye.